Black Adder. Black Adder is a series of four BBC One pseudo historical British sitcoms, plus several one off installments, which originally aired in the 1980s. All television episodes starred Rowan Atkinson as the anti hero Edmund Black Adder, and Tony Robinson as Black Adder's dog's body, Baldrick. Each series was set in a different historical period with the two protagonists accompanied by different characters, though several reappear in one series or another, for example Melchett, Stephen Fry, and Lord Flashheart, Rick Mayall. The first series, The Black Adder, was written by Richard Curtis and Rowan Atkinson, while subsequent episodes were written by Curtis and Ben Elton. The shows were produced by John Lloyd. In 2000, the fourth series, Black Adder Goes Forth, ranked at 16 in the 100 Greatest British Television Programs, a list created by the British Film Institute. In the 2004 TV poll to find Britain's best sitcom, Black Adder was voted the second best British sitcom of all time, topped by Only Fools and Horses. It was also ranked as the ninth best TV show of all time by Empire Magazine. Although each series is set in a different era, all follow the misfortunes of Edmund Black Adder, played by Atkinson who in each is a member of a British family dynasty present at many significant periods and places in British history. It is implied in each series that the Black Adder character is a descendant of the previous own. The end theme lyrics of Series 2, Episode Head, specify that he is the great-grandson of the previous, although it is never specified how or when any of the Black Adders, who are usually bachelors, manage to father children. As the generations progress, each Black Adder becomes increasingly clever and perceptive, while the family's social status steadily erodes. However, each Black Adder remains a cynical, cowardly opportunist, maintaining and increasing his own status and fortunes, regardless of his surroundings. The life of each Black Adder is also entwined with his servant, each from the Baldrick family line, played by Tony Robinson. Each generation acts as the dog's body to his respective Black Adder. They decrease in intelligence and in personal hygiene standards as their master's intellect increases. Each Black Hatter and Baldrick is also saddled with tolerating the presence of a dim-witted aristocrat. This role was taken in the first two series by Lord Percy Percy, played by Tim McInerney, with Hugh Laurie playing the role in the third and fourth series, as Prince George, Prince Regent, and Lieutenant George, respectively. Each series was set in a different period of British history, beginning in 1485 and ending in 1917 and comprised six half-hour episodes. The first series, made in 1983, was called The Black Adder and was set in the fictional reign of Richard IV. The second series, Black Adder II, 1986, was set during the reign of Elizabeth I. Black Adder III, 1987, was set during the late 18th and early 19th centuries in the reign of George III, and Black Adder Goes Forth, 1989, was set in 1917 in the trenches of the Great War. The Black Adder, the first series of Black Adder, was written by Richard Curtis and Rowan Atkinson and produced by John Lloyd. It originally aired on BBC One from June 15, 1983 to July 20, 1983, and was a joint production with the Australian Seven Network. Set in 1485 at the end of the British Middle Ages, the series is written as an alternative history in which King Richard III won the Battle of Bosworth Field on Lido be mistaken for someone else and murdered, and is succeeded by Richard IV. Brian Blessed, one of the princes in the tower. The series follows the exploits of Richard IV's unfavored second son Edmund, the Duke of Edinburgh, who calls himself the Black Adder, in his various attempts to increase his standing with his father and his eventual quest to overthrow him. Conceived while Atkinson and Curtis were working on Not the Nine O'Clock News, the series dealt comically with a number of aspects of medieval life in Britain witchcraft, royal succession, European relations, the Crusades and the conflict between the church and the crown. Along with the secret history, many historical events portrayed in the series were anachronistic, for example, Constantinople had already fallen to the Ottoman Empire in 1453, predating the events in the episode by 33 years, this dramatic license would continue in the subsequent Black Adders. The filming of the series was highly ambitious, with a large cast and much location shooting. The series also featured Shakespearean dialogue often adapted for comic effect, the end credits featured the words additional dialogue by William Shakespeare. Black Adder 2 is set in England during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, 1558-1603, who is portrayed by Miranda Richardson. The principal character is Edmund, Lord Black Adder, the great-grandson of the original Black Adder.
During the series, he regularly deals with the Queen, her obsequious Lord Chamberlain Lord Melchett, Stephen Fry, his rival, and the Queen's demented former nanny nursey, Patsy Byrne. Following the BBC's request for improvements, and a severe budget reduction, several changes were made. The second series was the first to establish the familiar Blackadder character, cunning, shrewd, and witty, in sharp contrast to the first series bumbling Prince Edmund. To reduce the cost of production, it was shot with virtually no outdoor scenes, the first series was shot largely on location, and several frequently used indoor sets, such as the Queen's throne room and Blackadder's front room. A quote from the series ranked number three in a list of the top 25 television putdowns of the last 40 years by the Radio Times magazine, the eyes airy open, the mouth moves, but Mr. Brain has long since departed, hasn't he, Percy? Blackadder III is set in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, a period known as the Regency. In the series, Edmund Blackadder Esquire is the butler to the Prince Regent. The Prince of Wales, the prince is played by Hugh Laurie as a complete fop and idiot. Despite Edmund's respected intelligence and abilities, he has no personal fortune to speak of, apart from his frequently fluctuating wage packet, as well, it seems, from stealing and selling off the prince's socks from the prince, if I'm running short of cash, all I have to do is go upstairs and ask Prince Fathead for a rise. As well as Rowan Atkinson and Tony Robinson in their usual roles. This series starred Hugh Laurie as the Prince Regent, and Helen Atkinson Wood as Mrs. Miggins. The series features Dr. Samuel Johnson, Robbie Coltrane, William Pitt the Younger, Simon Osborne, The French Revolution, featuring Chris Berry, Nigel Planer and Tim McInerney as the Scarlet Pimpernel, over-the-top theatrical actors, Kenneth Connor and Hugh Paddock, a squirrel-hating cross-dressing highwayman, Miranda Richardson, and a duel with the Duke of Wellington, Stephen Fry. This series is set in 1917, on the Western Front in the trenches of the First World War. Another big push is planned, and Captain Blackadder's one goal is to avoid being killed, but his schemes always land him back in the trenches. Blackadder is joined by his Batman Private S. Baldrick, Tony Robinson, and idealistic Edwardian twit Lieutenant George, Hugh Laurie. General Melchett, Stephen Fry, rallies his troops from a French shadow 35 miles from the front, where he is aided and abetted by his assistant, Captain Kevin Darling, Tim McInerney, pencil pusher supreme and Black Hatter's nemesis, whose name is played on for maximum comedic value. The series' tone is somewhat darker than the other Black Hatteras, it details the deprivations of trench warfare as well as the incompetence and life-wasting strategies of the top brass. For example, Baldrick is reduced to making coffee for mud and cooking rats, while General Melchett hatches a plan for the troops to walk very slowly toward the German lines, because it'll be the last thing Fritz will expect. The final episode, Goodbye, is known for being extraordinarily poignant for a comedy, especially the final scene, which sees the main characters, Blackadder, Baldrick, George, and Darling, finally going over the top and charging off into the fog and smoke of no man's land to die. In a list of the 100 greatest British television programs, Drawn up by the British Film Institute in 2000 and voted for by industry professionals, Blackadder Goes Forth was placed 16th. The Blackadder pilot was shot but never broadcast on terrestrial TV in the UK, although some scenes were shown in the 25th anniversary special Blackadder Rides Again. One notable difference in the pilot, as in many pilots, is the casting. Baldrick is played not by Tony Robinson but by Philip Fox. Another significant difference is that the character of Prince Edmund presented in the pilot is much closer to the intelligent, conniving Blackadder of the latter series than the sniveling, weak buffoon of the original. Set in the year 1582, the script of the pilot is roughly the same as the episode Born to be King, albeit with some different jokes, with some lines appearing in other episodes of the series. This special, set in the English Civil War, was shown as part of Comic Relief's Red Nose Day on Friday, February 5, 1988. The 15-minute episode is set in November 1648, during the last days of the Civil War. Sir Edmund Blackadder and his servant, Baldrick, are the last two men loyal to the defeated King Charles I of England, played by Stephen Fry, portrayed as a soft-spoken, ineffective, slightly dim character, with the voice and mannerisms of Charles I's namesake, the current Prince of Wales. However, Due to a misunderstanding between Oliver Cromwell, guest star Warren Clark, and Baldrick, the king is arrested and sent to the Tower of London.
The rest of the episode revolves around Blackadder's attempts to save the king, as well as improve his standing. The second special was broadcast on Friday, December 23, 1988. In a twist on Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Blackadder is the kindest and loveliest man in England. The spirit of Christmas shows Blackadder the contrary antics of his ancestors and descendants, and reluctantly informs him that if he turns evil his descendants will enjoy power and fortune, while if he remains the same a future Blackadder will live shamefully subjugated to a future incompetent Baldrick. This remarkable encounter causes him to proclaim, bad guys have all the fun, and adopt the personality with which viewers are more familiar. Blackadder, back and forth was originally shown in the Millennium Dome in 2000 followed by a screening on Sky One in the same year, and later on BBC One. It is set on the turn of the millennium, and features Lord Blackadder placing a bet with his friends, modern versions of Queenie, Miranda Richardson, Mel Chit, Stephen Fry, George, Hugh Laurie, and Darling, Tim McInerney, that he has built a working time machine. While this is intended as a clever con trick, the machine surprisingly works, sending Blackadder and Baldrick back to the Cretaceous period where they managed to cause the extinction of the dinosaurs through the use of Baldrick's best worst and only pair of underpants as a weapon against a hungry Rex. Finding that Baldrick has forgotten to write dates on the machine's dials, the rest of the film follows their attempts to find their way back to 1999, often creating huge historical anomalies in the process that must be corrected before the end. The film includes cameo appearances from Kate Moss and Colin Firth. Rowan Atkinson and Richard Curtis developed the idea for the sitcom while working on Not the Nine O'Clock News. Eager to avoid comparisons to the critically acclaimed Faulty Towers, they proposed the idea of a historical sitcom. An unaired pilot episode was made in 1982, and a six episode series was commissioned. The budget for the series was considerable, with much location shooting, particularly at Anna Castle in Northumberland and the surrounding countryside in February 1983. The series also used large casts of extras, horses and expensive medieval-style costumes. Atkinson has said about the making of the first series. The first series was odd, it was very extravagant. It cost a million pounds for the six programs, which, was a lot of money to spend, it looked great, but it wasn't as consistently funny as we would have liked. Due to the high cost of the first series, the then controller of programming of BBC One, Michael Grade, was reluctant to sign off a second series without major improvements to the show and drastic cost-cutting, leaving a gap of three years between the two series. Atkinson did not wish to continue writing for the second series. A chance meeting between Richard Curtis and comedian Ben Elton led to the decision to collaborate on a new series of Blackadder. Recognizing the main faults of the first series, Curtis and Elton agreed that Blackadder 2 would be a studio-only production, along with the inclusion of a live audience during recording instead of showing the episodes to an audience after taping. Besides adding a greater comedy focus, Elton suggested a mayor change in character emphasis, Baldrick would become the stupid sidekick, while Edmund Blackadder evolved into a cunning sycophant. This led to the familiar setup that was maintained in the following series. Only in the back-and-forth Millennium Special was the shooting once again on location, because this was a production with a budget estimated at £3 million, and was a joint venture between Tiger Aspect. Sky Television, the new Millennium Experience Company and the BBC, rather than the BBC alone. Each series tended to feature the same set of regular actors in different period settings, although throughout the four series and specials, only Blackadder and Baldrick were constant characters. Several regular cast members recurred as characters with similar names, implying, like Blackadder, that they were descendants. Various actors have appeared in more than one of the Blackadder series and or specials. These are Ben Elton's arrival after the first series heralded the more frequent recruitment of comic actors from the alternative comedy era for guest appearances, including Robbie Coltrane, Rick Mayall, who had appeared in the final episode of the first series as Mad Gerald, Adrian Edmondson, Nigel Planer, Mark Arden, Stephen Frost, Chris Berry, and Jeremy Hardy. Elton himself played an anarchist in Blackadder III. Gabrielle Glaster played Bob, an attractive girl who poses as a man, in both series 2 and 4. Rick Mayall plays Lord Flashheart, a vulgar friend in his first appearance and then a successful rival of Black Hatter in a later episode of series 2 and 4. He also played a decidedly Flashheart like Robin Hood in Back and Forth. Lee Corns also appeared in an episode of all three Curtis Elton series. He appeared as a guard in the episode Chains of Black Adder 2, 
as the poet Shelley in the episode Ink and Incapability of Blackadder III, and as Firing Squad Soldier Private Fraser in the episode Corporal Punishment of Blackadder Goes Forth. More established actors, some at the veteran stage of their careers, were also recruited for roles. These included Peter Cook, John Grillo, Simon Jones, Tom Baker, Jim Broadbent, Hugh Paddock, Frank Finley, Kenneth Connor, Bill Wallace, Ronald Lacey, Roger Blake, Dennis Lill, Warren Clark, and Jeffrey Palmer, who played Field Marshal Sir Douglas Haig in Goodbye, the final episode of Black Hatter Goes Forth. Miriam Margulies played three different guest roles, the Spanish Infanta in The Queen of Spain's Beard, Lady Whitey Adder and Beer, and Queen Victoria in Black Hatter's Christmas Carol. Unusually for a sitcom based loosely on factual events and in the historical past, a man was recruited for one episode essentially to play himself. Top political commentator Vincent Hanna played a character built as his own great 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 grandfather in the episode Dish and Dishonesty of Black Hatter III. Hanna was asked to take part because the scene was of a by election in which Baldrick was a candidate and, in the style of modern television, Hanna gave a long running live commentary of events at the count and interviewed candidates and election agents to a crowd through the town hall window. Howard Goodall's theme tune has the same melody throughout all the series, but is played in roughly the style of the period in which it is set. It is performed mostly with trumpets and timpani in the Black Adder. The fanfare is used suggesting typical medieval court fanfares, with a combination of recorder, string quartet and electric guitar in Black Adder 2, on oboe, cello and harpsichord, in the style of a minuet, for Black Adder III, by the band of the 3rd Battalion, Royal Anglian Regiment in Black Adder Goes Forth sung by carol singers in Black Hatter's Christmas Carol, and by an orchestra in Black Hatter the Cavalier Years and Black Hatter, back and forth. In 2000, the fourth series, Black Hatter Goes Forth, ranked at 16 in the 100 Greatest British Television Programs, a list created by the British Film Institute. In 2004, a BBC TV poll for Britain's best sitcom, Black Hatter was voted the second best British sitcom of all time, topped by only Fools and Horses. It was also ranked as the 20th best TV show of all time by Empire Magazine. Despite regular statements denying any plans for a fifth series, cast members are regularly asked about the possibility of a new series. In January 2005, Tony Robinson told ITV's This Morning that Rowan Atkinson was more keen than he has been in the past to do a fifth series, set in the 1960s, centered on a rock band called the Black Adder Five, with Baldrick, a.k.a. Baldrick Dash as the drummer. In the documentary Black Hatter Rides Again, Robinson stated that the series would present Black Hatter as the bastard son of Queen Elizabeth II and running a Beatles like rock band. Rowan Atkinson, Tony Robinson, Hugh Laurie, Stephen Fry, Tim McInerney, and Miranda Richardson would have reprised their roles, and reportedly, Brian Blessed, Elspeth Gray, and Robert East would have returned from the first series to play Black Adder's biological family. Robinson in a stage performance June 1, 2007 again mentioned this idea, but in the context of a movie. One idea mentioned by Curtis was that it was Baldrick who had accidentally assassinated John F. Kennedy. However, aside from a brief mention in June 2005, there have been no further announcements from the BBC that a new series is being planned. Furthermore, in November 2005, Rowan Atkinson told BBC Breakfast that, Although he would very much like to do a new series set in Colditz or another prisoner of war camp during World War II, something which both he and Stephen Fry reiterated at the end of Black Adder Rides Again, the chances of it happening are extremely slim. There were a couple of ideas that had previously floated for the fifth series. But Tatter was intended to be a parody of Batman with Baldrick as the counterpart off Robin, suggested by John Lloyd. This idea eventually came to surface as part of the comic relief sketch Spider Plant Man in 2005, with Atkinson as the title hero, Robinson as Robin, Jim Broadbent as Batman and Rachel Stevens as Mary Jane. Star Adder was to be set in space in the future suggested by Atkinson, though this too was touched upon in Black Adder's Christmas Carol. On April 10, 2007, Hello! reported that Atkinson was moving forward with his ideas for a fifth series. He said, I like the idea of him being a prisoner of war in Colditz. That would have the right level of authority and hierarchy which is apparent in all the Black Adders. A post on BlackAdderHall.com by Ben Elton in early 2007 said that Black Adder would return in some form, whether it be a TV series or film. Elton has since not given any more information on the putative Black Adder 5.
Love. During an interview in August 2007 about his film Mr. Bean's Holiday, Atkinson was asked about the possibility of a further Blackadder series, to which the simple reply no, no chance was given. Stephen Fry has expressed the view that, since the series went out on such a good high, a film might not be a good idea. During his June 2007 stage performance, chronicled on the Tony Robinson's Cunning Night Out DVD, Robinson states that, after filming the back-and-forth special, the general idea was to reunite for another special in 2010. Robinson jokingly remarked that Hugh Laurie's success on House may make that difficult. At the end of Black Hatter Rides Again, Robinson asked Tim McInerney if he would do another series and he responded no, because he thought people would not want to see them as they are now and would rather remember them for how they were. In the same documentary, Rowan Atkinson voiced his similar view, times past, that's what they were. However, Miranda Richardson and Tony Robinson expressed enthusiasm towards the idea of a series set in the Wild West, whilst John Lloyd favored an idea for a series with a Neanderthal Blackadder. Lastly, Stephen Fry suggested a series set in a prisoner of war camp during World War II, but later remarked that perhaps it's best to leave these things as a memory. On November 28, 2012, Rowan Atkinson reprised the role at the We Are Most Amused Comedy Gala for the Prince's Trust at the Royal Albert Hall. He was joined by Tony Robinson as Baldrick. The sketch involved Black Hatter as CEO of Melchett, Melchett and Darling Bank facing an inquiry over the banking crisis. In August 2015, Tony Robinson said in an interview I do think a new series of Black Adder is on the cards. I have spoken to virtually all the cast about this now. The only problem is Hugh, Glory SV. He's a huge star now. However, as revealed in October 2018, Richard Curtis has confirmed that the show will not return for a fifth series. All series and many of the specials are available on DVD and video. Many are also available on BBC Audio Cassette. As of 2008, a Best of BBC Edition box set is available containing all four major series together with Black Adder's Christmas Carol and Back and Forth. All four series and the Christmas special are also available for download on iTunes. February 5, 1990, BBC Enterprises Limited released the first series on two single videos. October 2, 1989, BBC Enterprises Limited released the second series on two single videos. March 6, 1989, BBC Enterprises Limited released the third series on two single videos. September 10, 1990, BBC Enterprises Limited released the fourth and final series on two single videos. On September 7, 1992, all eight single Black Adder video releases were re released as four complete double VHS releases. The four entire series videos were re released as single video releases on October 2, 1995. On January 5, 1998, five episodes of the first two series were released on a 15-rated compiled video by BBC Worldwide Limited. On November 4, 1991, Black Adder's Christmas Carol was released on a single video release rated PG, Cat. No. BBC V4646. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.